All right. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Yes, ma'am. I'm well. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, sir. So, so um, as I was telling your husband, um, uh, this whole uh, Zoom is being recorded, but I'm going to have my people to look at portions of it to see what we will show to our congregation. So I would ask you and your husband just to just to share uh, over a five or ten minute period. Just what, you know, what would you want? Uh, Tell us about your experience. What would you want us to know? Um, what, what, you know, what are things we can rejoice about? What are some needs, concerns we can pray about? Um, you know, just uh, just explain in uh, in your in your own words, in your own way. Uh, Tell us who you are. So this is Peter and, and Deborah Johnson. Uh, they're, they're missionaries uh, from Nigeria, and uh, they have relocated to Nigeria, now, to Canada. Now, when did you, remind us again, when you uh, got to Canada? We got to Canada uh, December 1st, 2020. It was uh, uh, during the, the, the winter, too. And during the COVID as well, so we had uh, we don't have so much of winter to adjust to, but we have COVID to adjust to. Uh, <laughs> uh, winter is also part of it, but uh, the COVID was a major adjustment, not for not for us alone, but the world. Had, I mean, the whole world is really experiencing something strange and new. It was new to everybody, but certainly new to us. Mm. And, more so that we had to come to go, go through quarantine and all of those. So we are we are we are in a strange land for missions and also to ourselves because of uh, the quarantine. Hmm. Yeah, COVID and then we had to quarantine. But everything went well and we came out of it very strong and began what the Lord wanted to brought us to do. Okay. So, so, so tell us your your assignment. What what is what is it that uh, the Lord is leading you all to do in Canada? Well, uh, is is primarily mission. Our primary focus actually has to do with Nigerian people from West Africa, uh, in part because that's what we are used to. And in the calling of God, he will always begin with you from known to actually unknown. Mm -hmm. And these are people that we are familiar with, but even now that we are here, we will see that the scope of the need for the gospel is broad. Mm -hmm. That is what we are, we are seeing now. And the gospel is for everybody, but we have to begin with people that we are used to and familiar with. Mm -hmm. And this is the way we have uh, sensed it. And I think part of it is, I was trying to say, people have different reasons for relocation. Some come as immigrants, some come, you know, they have different reasons, but it's hard adjusting in a new place. And for some people, once you miss that spiritual community that is supposed to encourage, help and build you up, you lose focus. And, uh, you have people in good number that have been affected in that way. And uh, the direction they have taken is not quite encouraging. And we are here, what can we do? We are trusting the Lord to, to honor the direction of people, this kind of people so we could be able to meet, to provide hope for them. And that is hope in the gospel. It doesn't matter about what has happened or what can. God is willing to start all over again. So primarily, we are here to provide leadership and then to take the mission of the Lord also to the people as the Lord will direct us. And we have sense progress so far since when we meet, which uh, I would like to share in given the opportunity. Okay. So like I mentioned, we came during the COVID. The pandemic is still on, but there's good progress at least from when it first started. 
So what we had to do is to see what others are doing, which is trying to share the gospel online. And it has been successful. We preach from, from we were able to get uh, things that we could use uh, to effectively communicate uh, to people. And the message has been going far and near, actually. So after the preaching, we upload the message on YouTube and Facebook for people to listen. And we are seeing a good number of people listening to the message, even making some comments and then trying to see where and how they can find us. Mm -hmm. And that is to say, maybe they have further pressing questions from the things they are hearing because the word of God, when it is being preached, it meets people at their own points of needs. Yes. So people will want to find a way to meet with us one way to the other. But because of the COVID, we have to do everything we could within the borders of the law. And so what we do is to create a forum where we do a kind of a Bible study. That too is online. And people are responding. We get the message to the Bible study. So the Bible study is focused on the message. And so when we meet and share the message, I mean the Bible study with people, we get to hear how the message has affected them, hear their questions, and then try to see how best we can answer. And uh, people don't want to leave even when the Bible study is over. Because they are now seeing each other from afar and introducing mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So yeah. they want to stay longer, stretch beyond the time. But some are coming from work, some are not. Some have more time for fellowship, others don't. So the next step is to create a forum. And that's always on Sundays in the evening. That's just for fellowship. Mm -hmm. We open that and people join. Some are joining from Saskatchewan, others from Winnipeg, Calgary and even here in Toronto. So that meeting that we are supposed to be meeting, that forum, I mean, COVID could not allow, we're able to do that online. And so it's interactive and you find people, you know, getting to know each other more and it's becoming more like a family now to the extent that people share deep stories about mm -hmm. themselves, something they could not do just by listening to the message alone by themselves in their homes. Right. So okay. that is what is happening. But more than that, they are becoming missionaries because everything we are preaching, teaching, and telling them has to do with mission. We want them to understand that they are supposed to be missional wherever they are. That's a primary reason for existence, at least for people who have experienced the grace of God and salvation. Mm -hmm. And so we are beginning to hear, even during the Sunday meeting, some of them, how they have used their Bible study or the message to advise, encourage, or talk to somebody about faith. Mm -hmm. And so we are hearing some of this. Sometimes it's so humbling to see how they could take a particular study and apply it to mm -hmm. encourage somebody or help somebody. Mm -hmm. And so they are becoming missional even in, that, in, that, in, the, in those areas. And that is what we are, we are thanking the Lord for. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are waiting to see also what will the Lord will do because they are growing and they like it. They said they like it. They are growing. In fact, their description is like this is a kind of a revival. Mm -hmm. And I can understand because when people are away from home and they don't have what they are used to and it's being brought back to them, it's tears a kind of desire, you know, to begin to pursue the things of God all over again. Okay. I think that is what we have, we have seen. But they are now representing more like in a post. They are more like if we have somebody where we have one or two people, we have a new person, we try to connect them from there. And who knows what the Lord will do, even from that little uh, number that is growing farther away from the room. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. So now, have you, you all have relocated to Missyaga now? 
Yeah, we've relocated to Mississauga on the on the thirtieth of December. Okay. Yeah, okay. we've relocated to uh, Mississauga. It was a difficult time to relocate, hmm. so because of the winter, but we felt we should relocate ahead of the spring and even summer so that we'll be able to settle and begin what we need to begin mm -hmm. or what we need to be doing with the new environment. It's a long desire to move to Mississauga. And you may ask maybe why Mississauga? Mississauga is very central. Okay. To our location. Anybody, the population of Nigerians in different locations that we can tell is just like a short drive to get to where we are in Mississauga. Mm, okay. So everybody can get to us on time. We can get to them on time. That's what we are seeing. But more than that, Mississauga has a very, very high population of people. So it's dense and we need to get to where the people are. Right, right. I think the third factor is it is also diverse. Mm, it's Okay. Um, so now, and I, as I looked on the map, it's the, it's a waterfront area. I'm assuming it's the Lake Ontario or something that you buy. Is that product probably for the winter that makes for more uh, more snow and cold cold uh, weather off that water? Yeah. It is, um, this area as it is, is, uh, is more like there's a lot that happens around here because of the water, okay. the location. And by the way, it is by this location that the missionaries left to Africa. Mm. That, is, that is the water that was used for them to actually uh, travel. Uh, down to Nigeria, especially. Mm. Mm. It, it, it has a lot of history, a lot that we have not had yet. But so far, we have done this. And they say so many things happen during the summer here. The, 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 even people in Mississauga, they come this direction to do exercise, to do work, and all kinds of things. Mm. So we don't know how the Lord has made it possible for us to come to this direction, to this area, but definitely we have to say it's the Lord. Mm. It's just the Lord. And we are in love with it. We are at peace with it. We just felt we are in the right place. Okay. All right. Well, so, so Deborah, tell me about your experience. Well, now that you've relocated, because I knew you had a job in the other area, so I Imagine you have to look for new work in this new area. Well, so yes, no. Uh, when I was working before, it's a kind of a group of companies. So they have one just like <laughs> one minute drive, seven minutes work from oh, my house. Okay, very good. If you can uh, work for the same company. Yes. So I so I applied when they we know that we are coming here, I applied. The day they gave us the key of this house, that's the day they gave me the application letter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now I'm working with them part time, where I see people. You know, I talk to them. I I see some Nigerians there, Africans come. You know, as a cashier, I have time to talk to them while they are buying their food. Mm. It's really interesting. You know, I'm trying to uh, get to know people and know. You know, their experience here, ask questions. Like where I make my hair, if I go to make my hair, sometimes it takes me like three hours before they finish making hair. So mm. all this time, I'll be asking them questions about their faith, you know, about churches in Toronto. You know, trying to know how to reach out from yeah. people that have been here for a very long time. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I do that. And um, if we, sometimes we just drive out to Africa, Stores, there's a lot of Nigerian, Canadian, uh, African stores here, not only Nigerian. Mm. So sometimes we just drive there. If it's less busy, we take that time to talk to the owner of the store about, about churches, about all how people are living and their faith and all that. Mm. So I think the challenge for many of them, you know, they came in here with the zeal, with the 
uh, Christianity, the way they are used to worshiping God back home. So they come in here and maybe go into maybe one man church and they have given all kind of promises and these promises have not come to pass. So some of them are withdrawn from the church. Like, well, we don't want to go to church, they are just deceiving us. Oh, they only want our money. So I think that is the challenge. So like, like we have to like prove to them that no, we are not. Oh, this is us. We're here to do what the Lord wants us to do. So you can you hear that when you're talking with people, coming with this kind of conversation here, and there are some are so another challenge is people are doing more than one job. So they want to be part of it, but they are they are extremely busy. That's another area of prayer too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just on the work uh, that Deborah is uh, is doing. When Deborah, when Deborah was was, uh, it, she was back and, and fought with them before we moved. So they gave her there was a window, which was not related to the cashiering job that she was used to and would love to. Then she was saying, "Oh, maybe I don't have to take it," and she emphasized that it's cashiering she wants to do. And the cashiering is because. It gives everybody that comes to the shop who may have to pass through her, and that will give us an opportunity to have some conversation if the time warrants, and maybe drop mm -hmm. if it is uh, give people their number, contact, and things like that. That mm -hmm. will make people to know who, who we are, what we are doing, and how they can get to us. So, and the Lord did it. That's why she was saying the day we were giving the key was the day they called her. And they said the cashiering work is open and that is all open. right praise the lord <laughs> yeah so i think that is that is part of what she wants to see. she could work full, full full time but we are here for ministry we have to stay focused and uh, i need her there are things that are very sensitive i can't do alone i can't go alone so she is always there so i walk around sometimes if i have this sensitive part of uh, things to do I try to walk around and schedule so we could do it. So the goal is that ministry, even here that we came new, is just opening door for us to get to know people just from where she was going. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a, a, a big one. And people here are very, are very friendly and a bit open. Mm -hmm. And we will see people from different parts of the world. Here in Toronto, you meet people from different parts of the world. In fact, we had some great conversation with, with, with people also from different parts of the world. Because when they hear uh, the opportunity you have in the things of the Lord, they want to ask questions. So our discovery, about, apart from our target, uh, what we have discovered is that people from other parts of the world, there is that kind of hunger. Mm -hmm. People are very open. They just want to know the truth. And when you begin conversation with them, you will know how misinformed these people are being. Mm -hmm. The good thing is they are asking you the question. And you will see there's a desire and they want to have an answer to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Very good. So tell us, um, uh, before we close, what, what would you have us to be praying for let me ask about what you've heard about family back home. Uh, have you heard any reports of your own family and friends back home? Any prayer concerns we have there? And then what would you have us to pray about for you in the work in Canada? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, you can go ahead. It's the same, it's the same family. Okay. Uh, Deborah is more informed because she communicates more more often than me. But uh, I think the problem with family at home appears to me like a general problem mm -hmm. that people are going through now in Nigeria. People are, oh, okay. What, yeah, what people are in Nigeria. But yeah. since you ask about our family, I will say it, but the truth is whatever our family are facing or going through is a reflection of what is happening because it's a ripple effect of the situation that is affecting family. People are living in fear. Okay. 
people are living in fear the security situation is not good yeah and so we keep having concerns as to what is happening or what shall happen in the next few years yeah and uh, because of the security situation you know which has affected uh, the country we we get to discover that we have a lot in our family that are also depending on us, both for spiritual direction and one way or another for support. We are both first in the family of seven, seven is Deborah lost father, mother is alive, I lost father, mother is alive. She has six or seven siblings, I have six to seven siblings too. Mm. So there is a this also that is there. It's crazy. Kind of a pressure, you yeah. know? Mm. And sometimes I think if we talk with them, they feel like, I don't know, like if we are home, maybe it will be better. Now we are far away. So um, they are happy that we are here and we're doing what the Lord wants us to do. But because of the challenge they are going through, it's kind of hard for them to know how more, how to, especially with the security, uh, security situation, mm. with the, I know the food shortage is all over the world. There's a lot of hunger all over the world. So that's a very difficult uh, situation for us, you know, calling us to, oh, we are in this need, we are in that need. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. that is everybody. So that's kind of a big challenge. Okay. Okay, so, that, that is it because uh, not everybody there is, is, is working and the work situation in Nigeria is, is collapsing. Mm -hmm. So many people are jobless and even those who are working are also going through uh, a very, a very hard time. But overall, they are fine and doing well. At least, uh, if you're listening, you hear all kinds of things happening by way of kidnapping and all of those things. But God has kept them, and we trust He will continue to keep them. So that is it uh, about that. You know. Okay. Yeah, that is that is it for family. All right. And for for us here. There was a pressure on 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 how to how to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Lord has given us a, a place central to what we have been praying for and what all of you have been praying for. Mm -hmm. So it has come to pass. And this is to say that God has answered prayer. In that regard, because it has a lot of implication. If we relocate to our wrong place, we'll be back by one year. But if you are in the right place, it's very possible that to move forward. Mm. In area. So we are in the so location is very, very sensitive. But let me even say, when we came in here, the person that led us to the one that was leading us to get the place, he said, Okay, you have seen the place, pray. If it is for you. The Lord will give him. Lucky enough, he's a believer. And we did pray. Mm. And when we did pray, he said, maybe this is your first prayer meeting. You know, so we just joke about <laughs> it. And the following day, he says that. Because getting a house in Mississauga is very competitive. Mm. Very, very expensive, very competitive. Everybody mm. would want to come to Mississauga ordinarily. Okay. Yeah. It's very expensive to live in Mississauga. And uh, mm. yeah, very competitive as well. Mm. Mm. But I okay. thought kept this place for us, which we are, we are grateful. We could still do the, 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 we could still record the messages and still send it, mm -hmm. for what God has provided. But we are sensing more now that there may be a need for us because the world is going to be opening very soon mm -hmm. and some of these people that we are meeting online that are close by may want to come to us then we may want to go also to them and yes. they're doing some spiritual things which the space we have may not or may not uh, may not take care of that and from what we are sensing we are sensing that the plan is right now for us to have a kind of a space mm. outside of the home space where we will be doing some kind of discipleship and then people will feel free to come. Unlike 
come to their house and just like that. If you have an open space, that this is what you do there, and then you are able to be maybe online and things like that, people will come there very, very easily and quickly. Mm -hmm. So this is where we are. We have the people, you have the people in mission. When you have the people, you need a place. But when you have the place also, the people will come. Mm -hmm. So from both ends, we will see that if we can get a space, many people will locate us and then God will give us the opportunity to be able to share what he has given us because it's needed here. It's needed here. You won't even know how much God has given you until you see somebody in need of this gospel, then you know that there is the deep need in the hearts of people for, for what God has to share with the world. That's what I can tell you. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, look, thank you all. Thank you.